Natal é aquela época mágica, perfeita para reunir a família, celebrar ao lado de quem a gente ama e sequestrar o Kevin Bacon. Pelo menos é isso que rola no especial de Natal do Guardiões da Galáxia, que traz Mantis e Drax indo atrás do astro de Footloose, porque eles acham que ele seria o presente de Natal perfeito pro Quill. Essa premissa absurda foi escrita e dirigida pelo James Gunn, que comandou os três longas do Guardiões e que agora virou o cabeça da DC Comics. Eu conversei com ele sobre Guardiões 3, sobre a DC e, óbvio, sobre Natal. Olha aí. Mas antes da gente começar, lembra de curtir o vídeo, clicar no sininho e assinar o canal. Sabe aquele infame especial de Natal do Star Wars? Pois é, James Gunn é um dos pouquíssimos fãs desse desastre natalino e diz que adorava quando era criança. Talvez essa tenha sido uma das grandes motivações do diretor para fazer seu próprio especial natalino no espaço. Por sorte, o resultado é bem superior ao especial de Star Wars, tanto que Karen Gillan, que interpreta a Nebulosa, chegou a falar que essa pode ser a melhor produção que Gunn já fez. Eu conversei com o James Gunn sobre alguns elementos desse especial e aproveitei para perguntar para ele quais as obras natalinas favoritas dele. Elf in the house. Yeah, yeah. Elf in the house and a group by my side. <laughs> Fantastic. Hi, James. How are you? Good, man. I'm really bummed out. You make me feel bad because I looked around for a Christmas sweat sweater this morning and I couldn't find one because I'm in a different house and I have all my Christmas stuff. So no, no. no festive gear today. Green is as close as I could get. My first question is kind of obvious and you probably answered it a lot in these last few hours, but where did the idea to make a Christmas special come from? Well, listen, I would always make, I would joke about it with Kevin years ago. And um, actually, while we were in post-production on volume two, I said, you know what? I really do want to do a Christmas, a Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. And he, you know, I said it somewhat seriously, somewhat jokingly. He brought it up to Bob Iger at the time and Bob Iger's like, yeah, we should do that. And so it just instantly happened. And then I wrote it very quickly. Like, honestly, I wrote it in like three days. So it was just came together, you know, so quickly. There were no notes from Marvel. So it was just one of these things that just happened just like this. Um, and everything came together smoothly because, you know, I wrote Kevin Bacon into the story and I called him right away and I was really afraid he wouldn't want to do it. And, uh, and he just was instantly in, he loved it. So this new guy you're introducing, I think his name is Kevin Bacon. Uh, was it hard to convince him to be in this special? It wasn't hard. I don't think, I think I just said, hey, listen, I want to tell a story about, uh, you know, a Christmas special with the Guardians. And he's like, okay, that's, that's cool, that's funny. And I said, um, I want Mantis and Drax, they want to give Peter Quill a Christmas gift. He's like, okay, so they, they look for something special. He goes, okay. I said, and that Christmas gift is you. <laughs> and then he just started laughing. And so he's like, okay. And then he did it and that was it. And then he was in and, uh, and I, I was off and running. But I was really afraid because I had already written the script and I didn't want to have to change it to somebody else. Why did you choose Drex and Mantis as the leads of the special? And why do you think these characters uh, fit better than others in the, the Christmas spirit? Well, I think that, you know, I, I just love Drax and Mantis. I love them as characters and I love their relationship with each other. I love the fact that they're so anarchic and when you get them together, they can go off in a thousand directions. They're an unattended fire hose, you know what I mean? And so to get them and and also because both Dave Batista and Pom Clementi are such talented performers and they've kind of been in the background of the past eight Marvel movies, to really give them front and center was important to me, to show people what they could both do as performers, as, as comedians and, and dramatic actors, especially Palm. And I thought it was important to see where Mantis is, because Mantis is an important piece of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And when we saw her last, she was a beaten down character by Ego, who wasn't fully herself yet, but it's been years since that. And she's a full-fledged family member of the Guardians. And so she's much more herself at this point. So I just I, I just find them incredibly easy to, to write. And then as actors, incredibly easy to direct. It's just, everything gets funnier. This special playfully hints at another Christmas special and maybe even a Easter special. Uh, besides the Guardians, what other MCU characters do you think could star uh, holiday-themed stories? Well, I really would like to see a Deadpool Easter special. I think that Ryan Reynolds would do a great job with that. So uh, that would be fantastic. And, you know, why not a Fantastic Four, uh, you know, Labor Day special? Who knows? Mas Natal não é só alegria, não. 
Esse especial é o pontapé inicial para o processo de despedida dos Guardiões e é uma das últimas vezes que a gente deve ver essa equipe junta, já que foi confirmado que o volume 3 vai ser o último com esse grupo de personagens. Eu também conversei com o Gun sobre o futuro dos Guardiões e tentei arrecar uma palavrinha ou outra sobre o novo trabalho dele na DC. The special does introduce some plot points for the MCU, like being and the Guardians by nowhere. Uh, how much do these moments uh, influence in Guardians 3? They're really important. So I think that, you know, I kind of use Guardians Christmas special as a Trojan horse to get in some plot points that I didn't want to have to, you know, explain at the beginning of volume three. And so the fact that they live in Uh, in, in nowhere, which they bought from the collector. I don't have to explain that in volume three. They're there at the beginning of the movie. The fact that Cosmo, this dog, who's a telekinetic dog, is a part of their sort of, you know, environment. She's now in Guardians volume three. And then the relationship you mentioned that we set that up so that that's a part of volume three. All of those things were things that were, you know, were planned out for volume three that I was able to push, you know, through in the special so that it became a simple thing for, for us not to take up too much time in the next movie. We know for a while now that Guardians 3 will mark the farewell of some major characters. Uh, how hard it is to write off uh, characters that you've worked on for almost a decade? It's sad. Um, it's not hard. It's sad. I think that, you know, it really isn't about, you know, writing off characters. It's about telling the end of a story that I started telling 10 years ago and getting to the place Uh, where we need to, in a lot of ways in volume three, going back to the beginning of the story to tell the end of the story and seeing why Rocket is such an important member of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so all of those things are emotional to me and often sad. I cry all the time while I'm writing. You know, I cry all the time on set when there's a sad scene. I just, I get teary eyed, you know. I cry, you know, uh, talking to Chris about how this is the last time we're going to do this thing, you know. So it's just very, very emotional for me. But it's also really, it's all born of love and, and love of these characters, a love of all of the people I'm working with, the actors, the, the crew members. Um, it's, it's emotional for all those reasons. Now more than ever, you're a man in in between two very passionate fandoms. Uh, how different are your interactions with Marvel fans and DC fans? There's there's no difference. I'm the same person to everybody, you know, and um, everybody is, uh, they're, they're, they're all the same to me. I've always been a fan of both Marvel and DC, and I will continue to be a fan of both Marvel and DC, you know, as long as they're putting out stuff that I enjoy. Now to wrap things up, because they're, they're telling me I have, I think I have one minute. Uh, what are your top three Christmas movies? Can I say specials as opposed to movies? Because those are the ones I really focus on. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do specials. You can do specials. Because uh, The Grinch, this TV special, is one of my favorite little pieces of art ever. I think it's a perfect little beautiful story. And then, of course, I also love the Rankin and Bass, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer special. And then I think I'm going to put a movie in, which is Elf. So those are the things that I, that I those are some of the many Christmas things that I love that make me really happy. Enquanto não chega a hora de ver Guardiões da Galáxia volume 3, dá para matar a saudade do grupo espacial da Marvel nesse fofíssimo especial de Natal que entra no catálogo do Disney Plus nesse 25 de novembro. Conta aí pra gente nos comentários se você é fã desse tipo de especial e se tá empolgado pra ver os Guardiões da Galáxia sequestrando o Kevin Bacon. Aproveita também pra curtir o vídeo, assinar o canal, clicar no sininho e ficar de olho lá no site do Omelete pra não perder nenhuma novidade.